Yo, what's up everybody, how you doing? This is your coach Renz and welcome to the Alchemical Mindset. Today we are driving in the car, so it's gonna be a quick video. Uh, but I wanna thank everybody who is a member, who have become a member of my YouTube page. Thank you for hit that join button if you wanna support the channel. Every full moon we're gonna have a private um, Zoom that only members will be able to be a part of. So if you wanna be a part of that, Join in. You want to be able to make sure your subject matters get spoken about? Join the page. Appreciate it. All my um, Patreon members, you will be part of the Zoom uh, access. Thank you, guys. So hit that subscribe button as well. Hit the uh, bell notification, the thumbs up. It helps with the YouTube alg algorithm. So anyway, this video. Just recently, we had the Ross family holiday party, and it was represented by multiple generations that started from two people two people's marriages is where it started from right so there was a discussion that was had while we were there and part of that discussion was the fact that my grandparents were married until they died and the question was why haven't other marriages lasted like that why haven't other people in our family been able to have that kind of marriage? And although I respect the time frame of my grandparents, I respect the fact that most people back then stayed married for a very long time. Within the discussion, I began to talk to especially some of the 30-year-olds who were married into my family, who were married, and they were in my family. And I began to explain to them how when my grandparents came up, it was taboo to get a divorce. That a divorced woman was considered a pariah in the community. I began to explain to them how women did not have the same level of rights and availability that a man had or that women have today. Let me put it in context for you if you're not quite getting it. It wasn't until the 70s that women um, had the right to claim spousal abuse. A man beating his woman in the 50s and 60s, and earlier than that, women didn't have a recourse to go to court and say spousal abuse. Back then, a husband can rape his wife. That was not considered rape. Times were different. Women didn't have work opportunities. It wasn't until the, the 50s and, and, and later that the children automatically went to the husband. So times were different. It was acceptable that a man may have a side chick. I've told you guys many times before, I've, I've dealt with women whose mothers had told them that the things that this is what a wife does, but that's what the his side chick does, his, his hoe in the street does. That this is the mentality of a lot of people from that older generation. So it is not a surprise that these people stayed married. The problem is they stayed married, but they were unhappy. They stayed married, but they were not in a loving relationship. They stayed married out of duty. And what we have today is people recognizing that you don't stay married out of duty. You don't stay married in a dangerous situation. You don't stay married in an unhappy, miserable situation that's, that, that you're at points of where change is not going to happen. You don't stay in those type situations. But for that time frame, people stayed in those types of situations. So... I, I even looked at my grandparents and I love them. I love them. I respect my grandfather, love to life my grandmother. But I have to tell you, one of the reasons why affection is a massive love language for me is because I watched the pain of my grandmother not getting that affection that she desired so much. So even though they stayed married until death done them part, that did, did them part. How about just be able to say that? They were not in a happy, blissful marriage. They had family. They had children. They had grandchildren. But they weren't in a happy, blissful marriage. 
And I began to talk to the 30 year olds about some of the hallmarks of creating a blissful marriage. And I want to share one of those big factors with you guys for just a minute. One of those big factors is that, and this is not the totality of it, but you got to understand and know what your spouse's love language is. You got to know what their love language is. The love languages are, if you don't know, really quick, the love languages are physical touch or affection, quality time, words of affirmation, acts of service, and gifts. So in having this discussion, I was talking to one of my nephews and I was like, what is your, you got to know what your love language is. And then you have to know what your wife love language is. So his wife love language was affection and quality time. His love language was words of affirmation and um, acts of service. Those are his primary two. Understand you have two primary. But to go deeper, I told both of them, what you have to really get into is why. Why is that your love language? Why is that her love language? Sometimes that love language is born out of growing up as a child and watching your parents and seeing how they were. Or it was out of a trauma, as in mine, in watching how my grandmother desired something and would be crying about something. I would give her, I would hug on my grandmother, hug on my mother all the time because I saw what they, they, what they wanted, what they desired. And I loved them. So, so I gave it to them because that, that those were the two women of my heart, you know, growing up. So it became my way of receiving love as well. When you understand, and not that it's wrong, let me be clear, not that it's wrong, but when you understand what your spouse is, what your mate's love language is. When you understand the why of it. Too often times we focus on the how and the what. What's your love language? Oh, it's affection. How do I give it to you? Oh, this is how I do it. You can do that and you'll do it, do it. But you're not doing it out of an ease. You're not doing it because it is it, something that's deep within your core. You're doing it because you're fo so focused on the how and the what. When you know the why and understand the why, you see there is knowledge, understanding, and then putting things into practice of wisdom. It's called the trivium. When you know it, you, you get the facts of it, the why. Then you understand that why. You, it ain't just about you knowing it. You understand that why. When you understand that why, it makes it easier for you to be able to do it if you can. And also, let me put a pin right there. You have to know whether or not you can do it. There are certain love languages that they so far away from you, it may become a difficulty. It may always remain a stressor for you to be able to um, acknowledge him or her in that love language. Like for me, gifts is very far and away. I struggle with gifts. I have to consciously put on a calendar, uh, uh, tra retrain myself to do gifts if that's the case. It's something that would take time for me um, to do. But let it be affection. Let it be quality time. Let it be words of affirmation. Let it be acts of service. Those become easier for me. Now, when the why is understood and the why can be accompanied and understood to the point where it gives you a, a an emotional uh, connection of empathy and sympathy for that person to understand it, it makes it easier for you to do it. Now, this is not to take away from other things that may be a deal breaker. You could give a person all the affection on in the world, all the gifts in the world, all the words of affirmation in the world, but yet if that person suffers from other traumas, that's why I say this is not the end all be all. If they suffer from other traumas and even knowing those traumas, you can't, their why is still not something that's allows for them to maintain that mentality and there's no change or not a diff big enough change or they cross a line that can't be crossed i'm not saying you still stick through it at that point no one should live in misery no one should live in a situation of anxiety no one should live in a situation where they don't feel safe no one should live in situations where you feel unloved no one should live in the constant in that type of situation I'm not saying that put a pen in it right there 
But what I am saying and what I am looking for you to understand is you div you understand why they had their love language is their love language it will make it easier for you to love them in that way and when you and someone are loving each other in their love language because know this it is habitual for you to love someone the exact same way you receive love quality time and affection those are my two primary followed up closely by words of affirmation it is so easy for me to be affectionate. It is so easy for me to spend quality time. Like, as a matter of fact, I get irritated if we're spending time together and you're on your phone doing that mess. You know, I would rather tell you, go do and scroll through your Facebooks and Instagrams and all that. And then let's come back together and have quality time. I'd rather give you, go do the time that you want to spend scrolling, but come back. And when we do come back, full attention I, I need all of your attention all right so i don't have a problem giving it in the way that i give in the way that i receive but if the person's love language is not the same is not the exact same as mine it's going to be a struggle i mean it would be a struggle if i only love them in the way that i give love they're not going to be receiving my love as deeply as they should. And that's the thing. You may love them. They may love you. But they, but you nor them are receiving it as deeply as the, it is meant to be given out. Because it's coming to you. You speak English and they're speaking Swahili. You speak Mandarin and they're speaking Italian. It doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. You gotta, you have to speak to them in the language to which they understand it. And when you know the why of it, the how becomes easier. The how becomes more of a part of you, more of a part of how you can express that love to them. So we talked about that. And I and my nephews, you know, they walked away from with it in thanks and, and actually pulled me to the side and, 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 and we had longer conversations. Uh, concerning learning from mistakes. How do you learn from the different mistakes you've made? And that's a subject we'll talk about later, the mistakes that you can make in a relationship and how to learn from them and move forward, um, how to avoid certain mistakes. Uh, we'll talk about that in a later uh, podcast, whether it be a live or, or a video. So, But I wanted to share that bit with you guys because uh, I am no... I, I've, had long, I've had long relationships and I've had short relationships. But I've gotten better and better in my understanding of each of relationship as I progress through life. And, and this, this wisdom, <laughs> this wisdom, uh, it allows for growth. It allows for the potentiality to have that magnificent um, type style of loving relationship. Uh, mainly because I, I, I know, I know what I need to do. I know how I need to think. I know how happiness must be a part of my being. I know how love must be a part of my being. So when you come to that level of understanding and, 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 and you learn from your previous mistakes, you realize how you um, made bad choices, how you took wrong actions, how you um, didn't have the right patience or you didn't have the right mentality. When you start realizing how your maturity level wasn't there, um, when you start to realize that when you was young, you didn't have anybody to give you that guidance. Then the same way I tell my children that if I had me as a father, I would have been a millionaire by the time I was 35. Or if I had me, and, and, and in this instance, I told my nephews, if I had me as a father, then my first marriage would have been my last marriage because there would have been a maturity level and an understanding of love and marriage that I have now that I didn't have then that would have made me more successful in the marriage. So as I go forward in life, I realize that and I know that. So as I deal with love, as I deal with relationships, as I deal with marriage, I come to a deeper understanding of how to pick, how to manage, how to lead, how to sustain, how to love. And that's the goal. So y'all have a great day.
Continue to join the group, join my Facebook, my YouTube group. Subscribe on Facebook. Subscribe on, you know the stuff. Subscribe on YouTube, on YouTube. Hit the bell icon, the thumbs up button. Look forward to it. Gonna start having some lives again. Got thrown off for a minute. But y'all have a great day. Remember, you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good vibrations. Good journey.